Let's start tonight, however, up north in Egypt. The country's president, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, has ratified a long-awaited investment law that grants investors like you a number of incentives, and that includes some pretty generous tax breaks. Now, the new investment law, for example, will give a 50% tax break on investments which are made in underdeveloped areas. The government will also be supporting the cost of connecting uh, utilities to new projects, water, power, gas lines, that sort of thing. Now, the legislation brings back private sector free zones as well. These are effectively exempt from both taxes and customs duty. You can also expect a 50% rebate on the cost of purchasing land for industrial projects if production starts within two years. Now, Egypt's direct foreign investment did jump quite a bit, up 39% in the first half of the current fiscal year, ending in June, to about 4.3 billion US dollars. All right, then let's get some details on exactly what this investment law does offer and the potential opportunities it opens up. Yasser Kim joins us now live from Cairo with more data. Um, Yasser, the law does set some time limits, as I understand it, on some of the procedures needed to invest in Egypt. But by itself, does that go far enough in terms of making it easier to do business in the country? Uh, Rama, of course uh, not, but but is a, an important and major issue uh, that has faced uh, most, if not all, investors who want to come to Egypt is the long time, a long process to to get it, to get papers done and to get the agreements done and to get your your piece of land, your 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 equipment inside the country. So so this will go a long way to to ease uh, investors. But obviously, one other issue is how uh, this whole law will be adopted and uh, using the one-stop shop, using the mechanisms, the new automization of the system will also help to eradicate another major challenge, which is corruption. Corruption has always been also another of the issues here. And the way this law has been adopted is that it will help also investors to avoid the, to face uh, corruption in, in many stages during their work, even after they start uh, operating. So uh, those two are important, as well as, as giving the, uh, the, the uh, foreign investor the same rights a local investor has. So it's not that differentiating laws and, and uh, rights from locals uh, favorable to, to foreigners. No, foreigners will be uh, treated as Egyptians, as locals, and even they can have a residency if they open a factory in Egypt. So uh, it, it kind of gives them uh, a, a lot of, of, of leverage as foreign investors to come to Egypt to feel safe here. But, but again, it all depends on how it will be adopted. On paper, it's excellent. Uh, a lot have, a, uh, not just in Egypt, but internationally, have a commended what's in the law. It's just to see how it will be put into force. Indeed. Uh, one last question for you. There's several incentives, of course, in this law, like that 50% tax discount on investment made in uh, underdeveloped areas to the tax and the customs uh, free private sector zones. But here's the rub of it. How does Egypt recoup the tax revenue that it will lose by offering these incentives? Well, you can't lose something you don't have, and that's what the government is saying. Uh, the, the, the FDIs are not as big as they, uh, the revenue coming is not as big as they want. But how do you attract them? Uh, first, give them the incentives. Uh, the the, the short-term benefits will come to the people first. You, you will open factories, it means uh, more job opportunities, it means uh, moving the economy, it means having other uh, factories, uh, local uh, 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 smaller SMEs uh, working to, to, to serve these uh, large industries. And then by time, you, you, after two years, because this is the, the le time limit, you have to operate within two years to have these benefits. You don't just get the land and, get the and put it down uh, and do nothing and keep it until it's more expensive and then you sell it out. No, you have to operate and, and produce and that you get your benefits. So it's more of a mid-term to long-term revenue for the government. But on the shorter term, the government wants to reach the $10 billion target, which has failed to do the last year, uh, only getting $2 billion in FDIs. Now you're saying it's 4.3, still uh, a long time to, uh, a long way to go to the $10 billion target. And they're planning for it in 2017, 2018. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you for that. That's Yasser Hakim, live, of course, in Cairo.